Hey guys, it's Gary Wong from GaryWongRealty.com again. People know me as the Christian Realtor. I'm also the author of the book on Vancouver real estate. I'm really happy and honored to have a guest with me. Kathy Yoon is the founder and president of Phase One Designs, a local architectural design firm. So Kathy, it's great having you here today. With Thanks, us. Gary. So Kathy, just to start out um, for our viewers, can you tell us about how you got into the industry and what does it mean by architectural design? Actually, some people might not really understand that. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to elaborate. So um, my first um, stint in the construction and design world was actually on the other side of the fence is what I always say, which I was actually an on-site project manager. So mm. what I actually used to do was, uh, I guess the best analogy would be like a builder. So I was on site, writing the trades, running the schedule, doing the budgets, making sure projects came on um, on time on budget and the whole nine yards mm -hmm. so uh, and lo loved it it was the coolest job ever um, but uh, you know kind of and kind of on the side I was servicing a few clients here and there in terms of doing drafting and the drawing work and it just got to a point where just the demand was so high for uh, my, you know, side services where literally, you know, the story of the entrepreneur, one day I woke up and just decided I was going to do that full time. So that was in 2006 and that was basically the birth of Phase One Design. Mm. Um, and so Phase One Design, to answer your second yeah. question, is a custom home design firm. So basically what we do is we work with a client from the day they wake up and decide that they would like to build a custom home, mm -hmm. all the way through the design process, the planning process, making sure their projects come in again on time, on budget, helping them to, s to select a builder, and of course helping them throughout the entire permitting and construction documents process. Okay, so you only usually work with the end user. Do you work with uh, like builders as well or? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do work with homeowners and mm -hmm. we do absolutely 100% work with uh, home builders. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, we work with quite a number of home builders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and on top of that, we also do work with investors who do want to be doing a spec project mm -hmm. where they're acquiring a piece of land, build something on it and then sell it to make a profit. Okay, thanks. So tell me um, how your company is, um, you know, different from others. We are very, very process oriented. Although design is a creative process, and don't get me wrong, you certainly do not want to stint the creative process whatsoever. It's a custom home, it has to be beautiful, people have to drive by and say, wow, what an amazing house. And they have to have that same feeling um, when they're walking through that home. However, that being said, if you think about it, a custom home is a lot of emotional and financial investment. So we want to make sure that from day one, when you decide you want to build a custom home, mm -hmm. that entire in-between piece from that day all the way to the day that you start construction, that piece in there is so crucial to setting up the construction for success. What we've actually come up with over the last 10 years is we have designed a five-step, really simple, proven process mm -hmm. that takes homeowners throughout that process just to make sure that they don't become one of those construction horror stories that, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately you hear so much out there. Um, so I would think, you know, to kind of sum it up, mm -hmm. it's our very, very uh, proven processes and procedures that sets us apart. So. Um that that's wonderful like how does uh can you tell us a little bit about the horror stories like what like what has ever gone wrong or yeah uh, that's a great question i mean yeah. a lot of people hear the horror stories on the construction side yeah. um which you know obviously there's uh and, and they will re remain a name but there's yeah. lots of them yeah. that you see on tv yeah. and things like that um so maybe i'll talk more about the design horror yeah, stories sure. that you hear if that's okay um so unfortunately we um uh, are sought out sometimes to fix other issues in design where you know a client will come to us and one of these issues has happened so just as an example um, sometimes we'll get a client that comes to us with a, a set of drawings and they can't build the drawings um, one really, really common mistake is designing something over budget. Mm. So, I mean, design's really fun and that's great, but at the end of the day, I mean, to be a responsible designer, yeah. you need to actually make sure whatever you're designing fits into the budget of mm -hmm. that homeowner. Otherwise, you've gone all the way down this road, paid your designer all this money, and then you're left with a set of plans that are 
useless, really. Yeah. Um, so that's a really, really common issue uh -huh. that we see. Um, another common issue that we see is um, having a house that's designed that you can't actually permit the way it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, so especially in uh, Greater Vancouver area, we, we operate both in, we have two offices, one in Calgary and Greater Vancouver. Oh, nice. Yeah, and both of them, you know, have very, very different bylaws and zoning regulations yeah, and yeah. everything. Um, but the point being is that mm -hmm. you really need to be working with somebody who knows their stuff. Yeah. Regardless of whether it's me or any designers that, you know, someone is that they're talking to, um, there's what you see written on paper in the zoning bylaws. And then there's actually what happens in practice, which most of the time isn't 100% necessarily exactly the same. Yeah. So you need to make sure that whichever designer you're working with has that experience to be able to know what you can actually permit. Um, and obviously there's always going to be changes throughout permits, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you certainly want to make sure you're not going into the permitting process with a set of plans where you're making major changes to the design mm. um, based on non-compliance. Uh -huh. um, Okay. Yeah, because obviously at that point, I mean, it's it's kind of sad, and most most people at that point in time are very emotionally tied to their mm -hmm. homes because they've spent you know months and months and months in the design process. Mm -hmm. So, like speaking of that, like you you want to definitely work with somebody who's knowledgeable. Um, if you were like hiring a an architectural design firm to build your home, mm -hmm. what are the criteria you'd be looking for? So, so maybe to answer your question, Gary, if you don't mind, you know, there's the obvious answers to those questions, you know, yeah. checking references, looking at portfolio, um, you know, driving by, seeing some of their projects, all that. Yeah. So maybe I'll talk about the what I th think sure. is commonly missed questions. Sure. Um, one of the really good questions I always encourage people to ask about is what what is the firm's background as it relates to the construction side? And what I mean by that is, you know, design is great and it's fun and it's creative. So that's definitely one huge piece, which you can usually tell from a firm's portfolio if they're strong in that or not. The part of the process that's harder to tell is the quality of the final construction documents. So basically your blueprints that you get at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. What is the quality of those? What you actually see on paper and communicate to the trades on site is probably one of the most important pieces of the entire design process, mm -hmm. which, you know, as a homeowner, you're kind of almost one step removed. So the point is, though, that you want to make sure that whoever's doing those drawings actually understands how things work on site. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can ask any custom home builder or any home builder in general mm -hmm, out mm -hmm. there. Uh, how many times they have come across a set of drawings where they say, oh, this is great. How am I supposed to make this work on site? And, uh, you know, and, and sure, that's that's maybe going to happen. But you certainly want to make sure that when it's your project and your set of drawings going out to site, even though there may be questions, they should be minor questions. Mm -hmm. um, and fundamentally speaking, your set of drawings should be buildable and constructible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the question to ask a design firm when you're Ask, when you're interviewing them mm -hmm. is how much experience does not only the principal of the firm have on the construction side but how much experience does the team have and more specifically mm -hmm. how much experience do the people who are doing the drawings have on site have they ever been on site or are they just educated you know kind of in school where you know they're just basically doing lines on paper mm -hmm. um, and there are some programs now I know at BCIT where I'm, I'm fairly certain that you have hands-on mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. experience where you're actually trained um, but even to add to that I mean industry experience like on the tools on site um, in the real world is very important to have mm -hmm. if I'm just going to an architectural design firm mm -hmm. how do I know if they're um, like what they're drawing is is of like high quality and good design. How do I know bad design from good design? You know, that's a great question, Gary. And it, to be honest, it's really tough. I mean, mm -hmm. unless you're in the industry and mm -hmm. you understand how to read architectural drawings, yeah. it's it's a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I always recommend, um, even clients we're talking to mm -hmm. as they're doing the interview process, yeah. is to go ask the builders that they've worked oh. for. So instead of saying, hey, give me references of the homeowners you've worked for, you say, give me some references from builders who have built from your plans. Ah, uh, okay. And then you go to, and when you're speaking to the builder, you say, okay, well, number one, what is the quality of the drawings that you're receiving and the level of detail mm. from the firm? And secondly, 
What types of issues have you run into, if any, with yeah. a set of drawings? Um, you know, and those answers may vary. I mean, like I mentioned before, I'm not going to sit here and yeah. say, and I don't think anyone can honestly say that a set of drawings is going to, going to be 100% perfect because yeah. mm -hmm. there's literally hundreds of thousands of details mm -hmm. on them. Um, but on that same token, you know, it should be minor things like, oh, maybe there was, uh, you know, a dimension that maybe it would be nice to have on the drawings. That's mm. easy to do. You don't want to have drawing issues where, you know, for example, there's major structural issues or things not lining up mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. um, inefficiencies in the building itself. Um, so just the, just the type of issues that the builder had run into with the drawings, that's mm -hmm. a really important question. So just to clarify, mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about it. Architectural design, is that the same as an architect? Uh, that's a really good question, yeah. and uh, yeah, thank you for clarifying. So just to be 100% mm -hmm. uh, for 100% clarity, mm -hmm. I'm an architectural technologist. My training is um, in Alberta mm -hmm. at the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, yeah. SAIT. Okay. Um, so the difference between my training and that of an architect, and that is two different things. Okay. Um, there is a longer um, piece of education that an architect has to go to, uh, and you know, obviously, uh, in in terms of like the specifics you'd have to go on the website and mm -hmm, get those mm -hmm, details mm -hmm. um, architects can design basically any building out there okay more or less right anything commercial residential absolutely anything. and that's where you need the architectural seal for yeah um, architectural technologists and people with my training can design up to a certain size of a building okay um, and up to a certain the height of a building yeah. and and uses and you know so obviously we can't design things like hospitals and big commercial structures and bridges and exactly yes. exactly exactly um, so I mean for I, I can't really speak to, for other firms that mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. that have architectural technologists but for our firm we focus and we specialize only on custom homes that's uh, that's our okay. niche uh -huh. that's what we love to do and we consciously make that choice yeah um, and there are many firms out there who uh, operate everything exactly right? yeah. yeah yeah so there's not really right or wrong it just yeah. it's all, it depends on what type of building that's that right. you're building that's right yeah okay so like um, tell me about like the the day in life of you know an architectural technologist like okay yourself. what's well, it like running a company uh, that you know that has been very successful over the past decade. Well, thank you, Gary. Um, first off, I have to say it is so much fun. Like I, I feel like the luckiest person in the world because mm -hmm. we just work with amazing clients, amazing colleagues. We have an amazing team that we built. Um, so yeah, that's that's number one, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I mean, every day is different, and I think that's what's so great about it. Um, you know, a typical day. I don't think there is a typical day, but I mean, our tasks include meeting with clients, talking to them about what it is that they want in their custom home. Mm -hmm. um, we work together very closely. Uh, we have a team of seven people and um, in our Calgary office, and we have a team of, I think we're up to six people now in our Vancouver office. Mm -hmm. And so we work very closely together on a day-to-day. -day. Um, the most exciting days are when we get to do design presentations mm -hmm. with our clients, which is basically presenting a design which they've never seen before to their cli oh. to our clients. Um, and we get to tour them through their homes in virtual 3D. Yeah. And um, so that's pretty fun. Uh, some days we visit construction sites just yeah. to tour them and make sure you know the design is and construction is progressing as per the drawings uh, so we consult a lot with our home builders that we work with okay great as well. great and um, what are some typical uh, misconceptions about your industry specifically so some typical misconceptions is uh, that design is a commodity product oh. so there's a lot of different ways that you can get a set of drawings um, mm -hmm. and I can't really speak to all the different ways but all I do know is that the quality of your of your uh, design and most importantly the final drawings um, there's a huge variance with mm -hmm. regards to that quality and really it's kind of like an insurance policy you know you may spend a little tiny bit more money up front to get a good quality set of drawings um, but if you don't actually spend that money up front, then you could be in a situation where you're entering a construction project with a low quality set of drawings, and then you end up with issues on site, and then you end up paying for it anyways. And then, of course, and then you also have the headaches and the stress and the time implications that come with that. Yeah. 
Because I've seen in the industry there, there are some homes that are designed um, quite poorly, but then the finishings are quite good. But then in the end, it would affect the resale value because it was designed. Um, some of the floor plans were fu not functional. And absolutely, have you have you seen that kind of? Yeah, thing? you know, unfortunately, Gary, I have seen a lot of that yeah. because there are people who come to us to fix these plans um, quite often. So we, we actually do come across a lot of those where we're, we're asked to fix those. Um, so yeah, I mean, a really common one is you know, like you said the functionality yeah. of a home and um, even things where, you know, when you're designing a home and on paper, the plans to, you know, a homeowner that doesn't look at plans all day mm -hmm. says, okay, yeah, you know, this works great. And then you go and try to move your furniture in and then, oh my mm. goodness, how does this work? My furniture doesn't even fit in this space or, you know, all I can fit is one couch for my mm -hmm. family of six, you know, or whatever it is. I yeah. mean, so yes, design is very important. Okay. And like, um, if, if somebody like um, just wants to design and build mm -hmm. a home, what can they expect to, to pay for uh, someone, to, a company or a firm to design um, their, their home? What's the range or is there a difference between the range? And Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, and maybe the way I'll answer your question, just because the fees vary mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can maybe speak to what we see in, um, in our part, our, our kind of sector, where mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. our, our niche is the more luxury market, where people do value the mm -hmm. quality yeah. um, of the homes. So you know, us and our competitors, I would say for the building design component, not mm -hmm. including the interior design, you could be looking at anywhere from you know a starting range of anywhere from four to five dollars a square foot, all the way up to eight to nine dollars a square foot. Okay. You know, and obviously in the middle being an average. Okay, okay. Um, and depending on the house, depending on the site, so there's a lot of different variables. It's a hard question to answer. Yeah. Um, so typically, you know, somebody would like to know exactly what it costs for them. Mm -hmm. um, we would be able to give them a quote. And, yeah. You know, obviously understanding mm -hmm. uh, what the site is. Yeah. And then you, I, I caught that you were saying building design. Do you guys do building and interior design? Yeah, we absolutely can. Oh, um, okay. The way that we manage uh, interior design is a little bit unique. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different models out there. So instead of being tied to one interior designer um, who works within our firm, mm -hmm. we actually give the client the choice of choosing who they work with. So we oh, have, okay. yeah, so we have a few different partners um, and our mandate is to make sure that the client is partnered with the perfect for, for them. Um, so what we will do instead of just saying, this is the interior designer that you work with, if you choose to work with us on the building design, we say, great, thank you for working with us on the building design. Here's a few different firms that, that we can you know, help you interview and make sure that it's the right fit before we go down that road. Okay. I, I know in the uh, building industry, there mm -hmm. are some builders who cut corners and that kind of thing. Like, does that happen in the architectural design um, industry? Yes, unfortunately it does. Yeah. Yes, it absolutely does. Like, why does it happen? How does it happen? And I think, um, I think the reason why it happens is um, just because there's not really you know, kind of a, a governing standard necessarily oh, okay. for how drawing should be done. Um, so, you know, it's, I guess it depends on what type of structure that you're looking to build, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the quality of drawings go from very basic to quite elaborate. Mm -hmm. So I guess the best way to explain it is, um, you know, let's say if you're building a very simple structure, let's just mm -hmm. say you're building a detached garage. Okay. Well, you know, you probably wouldn't want somebody who has or, or need somebody uh, like us, for example, who, um, you know, our niche is to do very detailed drawings on luxury homes. So mm -hmm. our level of detail is very, very high. Mm -hmm. um, you would definitely be in someone in, in great hands with somebody who does just basic drawings yes. because for a project like that that's really what you need you just need permit ready drawings that are done quick cheap fast and into mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. and then let's go to construction um, you know so there's nothing wrong with those yeah. types of drawings it's just what you want mm -hmm. um, you know and if you're doing a really 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 basic house and uh, I would just have a little caveat there that uh, no matter how basic your house is in a major city such as Vancouver or Calgary, mm -hmm. um, it, it, there's no such thing as a simple house when you have to do those types of permits. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're doing uh, a more quality build, uh, you 
those types of people typically want to seek out a firm that has that um, that specialty and that level of detail and quality in their drawings. So how do customers know if the design firm are, are cutting corners? Like, Are there any telltale signs? I think um, a telltale sign, again, is really, it, it's difficult for a homeowner. So again, I would just um, go back to interviewing the builders that mm -hmm. they actually work with. Because yeah. really, at the end of the day, um, that's really the way to tell. A builder mm -hmm. is going to be able to tell you very quickly Yes, the quality with which these drawings are being produced is very high, mm -hmm. or they would be able to tell you they're, it's very low, or wherever it falls in between. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so like, um, last question. Mm -hmm. um, for someone who's looking to just design a home mm -hmm. and, and um, they, they have no clue, they've never done it before, uh, what, are your, what are your tips and advice for someone who's just starting out wanting to design and build their, uh, build their first home? Mm -hmm. um, what, what kind of uh, advice would you give to them? So um, we do speak to quite a few people that are in that scenario. So my first tip is basically um, to build the right team. Mm -hmm. and surround yourselves with the experts who are going to be there to educate you along the way. Mm -hmm. And that probably sounds easier than, um, or sorry, harder than it sounds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but uh, a really, really good starting point is just to you know go up there and start talking to the reputable builders and the reputable design firms that are out there. Um, and very quickly, you know, they'll, you'll be able to find the right people that you trust to guide you along the way. Basically cross-reference as well, right? You can ask, Absolutely. You can ask the design firm to re refer uh, reputable builders as well. Absolutely, yeah. The Greater Vancouver Home Builders Association in Vancouver mm -hmm. is a great starting point if you're mm -hmm. doing a build in the Greater Vancouver area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a great starting point for builders. Um, on our website, there's a whole bunch of educational resources that we uh, just give to the public at no charge either. So um, we're huge on educating the public just to understand how to do a build properly, um, just so that they can make sure they don't fall into any of those uh, common traps, right? So, so um, does it cost money for someone to just talk to you or um, have a consultation with you? Absolutely or? not. Um, every th we're huge on educating clients. So mm -hmm. uh, one of my goals is just to make sure that the people that we work with, regardless of whether or not they decide to work with us long term, mm -hmm. is just kind of just setting them in the right direction, just to make sure that they're talking to the right people, the right builders, um, you know, doing things in the right order, the right steps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Building, designing and building a custom home can be a very complicated process. Um, and we just want to be able to provide resources for people and be that resource for mm -hmm. people. And no, it does not cost anything to you know, just have that initial consultation. Mm, great, that, that's great yeah. to hear. And uh, you know, if, uh, how can our viewers uh, find out more information about your company and you and your portfolio? And so that's a great question. Um, so there's tons of information on our website phase1design.com, so that's P-H-A-S-E, the numeral one, design.com. Mm -hmm. um, and all my contact information is on there as well, so. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks uh, for having this uh, interview with us. And, um, you know, Thank I look you, forward Gary. to uh, talking with you more in, yeah. in our next video. Thank you, Gary, thanks. so much. Thanks, guys, for watching my video. Please subscribe and share with your friends. Email me if you have any more questions. Thank you.